Uh, today's webinar session is on design and analysis of underground water tank and elevated water tank. My name is Nivedita Khole and I'm the technical support engineer in Midas IT. So as you can see, you can write your queries to my email address, nivedita at midasit.com. In today's webinar session, we'll not be starting with the company introduction. Rather, we will directly go to what all Midas software solutions are available and the introduction to Midas engine. If you have got questions, sorry. If you have got any questions, then you can write at the questions box and I shall be answering all the questions at the end of the session. Let us start with the software solutions Midas is offering. Midas has four main family programs. One is in Bridges, in which we have Midas Civil, which is for the analysis and design of all types of bridge structures. You can perform a detailed nonlinear analysis in Midas FEA software. Then in the structures, we have Midas Engine, Midas Drawing, and Midas Design Plus. We shall be seeing Midas Engine and Midas Drawing in today's session. Midas Engine software solution is for analysis and design of buildings and general structures. And the design results from Midas Engine can be used in Midas Drawing for detailing purpose. Midas Drawing can also generate bill of material. Coming to the geotechnical, there is GTS NX software solution for 3D finite element geotechnical analysis. And for the 2D geotechnical analysis, we have SoilWorks. SoilWorks is based on finite element analysis. However, it also contains analytical geotechnical solutions for practical design. Coming to the mechanical, we have Midas NFX and Midas FX Plus software solution. Midas NFX can be used for impact analysis and 3D computational fluid dynamic analysis. All software solutions offered by Midas are completely integrated with each other. So you can take one model to other software solution and perform the analysis and take it back to the previous one. So that's about the Midas family programs. Now we are going to have a small introduction to Midas engine software solution and we'll look at its strength in terms of the tank structures and other types of structures as well. So let me begin with the introduction to Midas engine. Midas engine is our next building solution, next generation solution for building analysis and design. You can perform analysis design and drafting using Midas structural solutions, especially Midas engine. You do not need to go to different software solution for performing the analysis and then probably use Excel sheets and then use CAD softwares to join to create the drawings. So it's an all in one software solution for structural analysis, design and detailing. Let's look at the codes available in Midas engine. When it comes to wind loads and seismic loads, we have European standard and there is British standard for wind loads. When it comes to steel and RC design, we have European as well as British standards available. Other than that, American codes are also included in Midas engine. Moving ahead, to the integration of Midas Engine with other software solutions. We can import as well as export the BIM modeling tools in Midas Engine. We can perform the analysis and send it back to the BIM tool. After that, we can perform design in Midas Engine and the design results can be taken into or imported in Midas drawing software, wherein you can create DWG or DXF files. The files generated by Midas drawing can be used in any CAD software solution. Most famous as we can see is Autodesk AutoCAD. 
Midas also offers Midas iCAD software, which is very much similar to 2D AutoCAD. So that's about our integration of Midas Engine software solution. Midas Engine is actually starting from architectural drawings, wherein those can be used for the modeling. Then in Engine, we can perform the analysis design, generate the design reports, and also the quantity takeoffs. And finally, we can come to the structural drawings. So basically, we have engine that starts with architectural drawings and end to structural drawings. So from drawing to drawing, Midas Engine is an all-in-one design system. It has got integration of all these processes and it has various automation tools to quickly generate the model and perform the analysis and design. Optimization in terms of accurate modeling and high quality outputs can be generated in Midas Engine. Let's move ahead to some of the major strengths of Midas Engine software solution. Starting with the integration. Integration of modeling, loading, analysis, design and output is one of the major strengths of Midas Engine software solution. Let's look at the automation. So when it comes to automation, and especially when it comes to the modeling part, there are various functions available. For example, the CAD tracing tool. You can trace the cross section of, this, of the columns as well as the shear walls and generate your entire structure. You can also easily locate the beams from the center line plan. As we have simple CAD based features, you can also do the modeling of beams easily. The slabs can be very quickly generated by considering the periphery beams. Let's look at some more features. We can use move feature very easily. Copy feature. We can change the size. Extend tool and trim as well. Further, we can create openings very easily in Midas engine software. Next, when it comes to irregular shapes, we have sweeping tool available with us. Plus you can divide or trim that portion to generate this type of a structure. Auto meshing is also available and we can also reduce the size of mesh if we would like to get results more in detail. All types of foundations can be modeled, analyzed, and designed in Midas Engine software solution. You can also generate detailing as in drawings of all these foundation types. So we have strip footing, isolated mat footing. We can have pedestals for steel structures and footing girders like plant beams. And we can also model basement walls and assign earth pressure on it. We can also consider the supports from the piles. All we have to do is provide the stiffness for the piles and the arrangement of the piles. The pile arrangement is also very easily done in Midas Engine software. You can use various functions available to provide the location of the piles. So let us move ahead in Midas Engine software solution and see how all these automations can be used. So I'll go to Midas Engine software solution right now. 
For those who haven't attended the previous two sessions, I would like to introduce you to the interface of Midas Engine. It'll be very quick and short. Midas Engine has a ribbon menu at the top and it is divided into different tabs. And all these tabs are arranged as per the workflow from left to right. So first four tabs for modeling, then apply the loads, apply the support condition, perform the analysis and the design and check the analysis and design results. Finally, we'll generate the reports and drawings. So from left to right, we finish with our entire project. We have got three menu on our left side, again divided into tabs and as per the workflow. You can, however, modify its position. So the first works tree is our uh, modeling tree menu. And then we have got analysis tree menu that gives information about all the loads and boundary conditions and the cases of analysis. Design gives us information about all the design groups and the reinforcements applied and the design cases. You can change the background of your screen from light to dark or dark to light by double clicking on the display tree menu. Then we have a table tree menu, which gives all the input and output information in the form of tables. You can easily modify the property of any selected member from the properties menu box. At the bottom, we have got a message window which gives us information about all the errors and warnings while we are giving the command or while the analysis is being performed. The unit system can be modified at any point of time in the pre-processing mode or in the post-processing mode. We have got automatic intersect option and just like AutoCAD, we can use F8 command to have modeling performed in orthogonal directions. So that's about Midas Engine user interface. When it comes to modeling workspace, we have got three modes of modeling. 3D mode can be very well used for general structures. When you have got any uh, modifications to be done in a plane, you can use plane mode. And if you have a building structure, you can use the story mode. You can access to any point of uh, viewpoint by clicking on the middle scroll button. So now let us start with creating our underground water tank and we will see its complete analysis, design and drawing generation. To create the underground water tank, I'm going to be using the wizard method of modeling. Of course, there are various other methods of modeling depending on the type of structure. For example, we have importing function wherein you can import your BIM tool files. You can import STAD, Parasolid files or any 3D, DA, 3D or 2D DWG DXF files. You can, for building structures especially, trace the architectural drawing. And further, you can use grid lines to create your members. And wizard, which we're going to be seeing today, can use it for the uh, basic type of structures. Then further, we have member tab wherein you can use the coordinates to locate your members. We have the body tab to sketch your entire structure and convert its parts into members. So these are different methods of modeling and today we are going to look at the wizard 3D assembly shape of modeling. Here, I'm going to take a rectangular underground water tank its height would be of 4.25 meters and 4.25 meters because uh, the water level is going to be 4 meters and 25 or sorry 250 mm would be the freeboard then further we will have 10 meters in the one direction x and then we have got the 5 meters in the other direction we can add this shape we can add multiple shapes as well, and then we can click on OK. Now, when we add our box, we can choose if it should be covered from the bottom and from the top. So I'll be covering its top 
and the bottom we can create as a matte foundation separately. If not, you can also go ahead to use the cover at the bottom and then you can create the periphery or the uh, offset part of the matte foundation. So both options are possible, depends on how you would like to create your model. All right, so these are some of the options. I will be unchecking the bottom one and I will after that also provide a property. So property by default is available in Midas Engine and two properties for thickness is available like T150 and T300. So here you can choose if you have already defined the thickness or you can right now just apply whatever we have here and then modify the property later on. You can choose where you would like to keep your uh, shape. So for example, you would like to keep it at five meters in the X direction and 2.5 meters in the Y direction. You can choose it likewise. And then you can click on OK. So we have our water tank right over here. And now we will move ahead to the next part that is to create our matte foundation. Now to create our matte foundation, we can simply go and click over here to member and matte foundation and simply click on the periphery of our wall. Then we can assign a distance of the distance of let's say one meter and then click on apply. So we have got over here our matte foundation. Its thickness is 150. We will modify it later on. One more thing is that we are going to be applying separate loading inside of our water tank. So for that, we will create a special body function that is face. So this face will be created by just simply selecting the periphery lines which are uh, generated automatically because of the shell that the program has created. So we have got over here a face which will be utilized for applying the water pressure load vertically downwards. So we have one member, but the loadings applied are going to be different for the inside portion and outside portion. OK, so this part is done. Next is we have got shell type of members over here. Shell type of members would be useful for only analysis. As we would like to perform the design, I'm going to be selecting all these vertical shell members and converting them into wall type of member or plate type of member. So I'll create a wall type of member over here and we can select plate mesh type and we can have a different thickness. So that's one part. Secondly, we have got a top slab and this will be a slab type of member. So I'll change its property to slab and we can make it as a plate out in as it is resting on the walls. Now, when it comes to the top slab, many a times we are uh, analyzing it such that its forces are not transferred in one direction on the walls. So to release its uh, forces and movements, or basically making it one way type of a slab, we can use the boundary function, boundary tab, and in that we have plate end release. So in this plate end release, I'll just show only this slab. Uh, I can just avoid it to transfer any uh, moments and loads uh, forces on this particular plate and then select its edges. Won't be, it will be shorter edges that I'm selecting. So the loads will be transferred on the longer edges only. And then I'll click on OK. So in this way, we have allowed the forces to be transferred only to the longer edges. All right, so let us uh, show all the members. After this is done, we will move ahead to the next part that is to generate the thicknesses. So 
To create the number of thickness properties, we have our model tree menu. And I mean, this is a shortcut procedure. You can directly go to the model tree menu and go to the thickness and you can right click and click on add. There is another method. You can go to define and then you can click on uh, 2D thickness. So this is another option. You have to select the material property and provide a thickness. So let us provide, uh, provide a thickness for the mat foundation, which I'm assuming it to be 440 mm. And I would like to have the uh, wall thickness as 400. And I would like my slab to have a thickness. Okay, let it have a thickness of 150 mm right now. Or I'll make it 200 and I'll click on OK. So I have defined three properties over here. To assign these three properties, I can either do the selection and change it from here, or I can also select and drag and drop, and the property will get modified. So we have this drag and drop feature as well for modifying the properties. So same thing I'll be doing for this part. These are our walls and for the walls I have 400. Then for the mat foundation, the thickness is 440. So here we have all our members uh, for ready for the analysis and design, but uh, we still have to apply the loads and boundary conditions. So we'll move ahead to the next part that is apply application of loads. So here we are going to assign the self feed first of all, which will come under a dead load set. We'll also be applying a live load on the slab. And that is it. So let's use the dead load set and assign the self feed factor. So this way we have assigned the self feed. The next part is about assigning the water tank or water pressure load from inside the tank and the earth pressure load from outside the tank. So for that, we have got a special function that is earth pressure function. Instead of selecting a plate and then assigning a trapezoidal pressure loading by manually uh, calculating the values of the top pressure and the bottom pressure, we have got the earth pressure function. By using this earth pressure function, you can define what is the earth pressure from the outside by simply providing information. Wherein we specify the ground level, which is 4.25. If there is any water in the ground, then you can specify that as well. If not, you can keep it at a lower so that the buoyancy will not get affected. Then further, we have the bottom level, which is at zero as we have modeled our water tank at zero level. Then we provide a soil density. I'm assuming 22 kilonewton per meter cube as the soil density and the internal angle of friction as 37 degrees. If there is any surcharge load, you can assign it over here as additional load on ground. After we provide all this information, all we have to do is simply click on calculate. No manual calculations required. We have successfully calculated the earth pressure. And uh, if you're not using this information, then you can also make your own equation for the calculation of earth pressure and create the earth pressure load. So once this is done, we click on OK. And yeah, I mean, there is one more. We have to add water pressure. So for water pressure from inside the tank, we will specify our ground level, which is 4.25. But our water level is at 4 meters and bottom level is 0. Soil density is zero as there is no earth pressure from inside. So everything else will be zero and all we do is click on calculate. By uh, including 9.81 as the density of water, the buoyancy force is calculated. So gamma H is the calculation for this and that's it.
So earth pressure from the outside and water pressure from the inside is ready to get applied. Now here we are going to see how to assign. We will simply select all our walls. So we have got our walls here. And let's click on Add. So as we click on Add, we can see, let me activate only the walls so that there is a clear view. Yeah, so we can see slightly how the pressure load is going to get applied. It's from the inside or from the outside. So as we can see it is from the inside, we need to change the direction of our load. So we just change this forward to reverse direction. And we can see now the pressure loading applied from the outside. That's the earth pressure load. Let's click on apply. And we will be selecting the same water tank walls and adding them. Now this will be forward direction itself because we are assigning the water pressure from the inside. So in this way, we have assigned the earth pressure and the water pressure from the inside and the outside. So I'm going to be activating all the members now. And we will be assigning the loads on the rest of the part. So here I'm going to assign, first of all, a load of earth pressure on the outside part. So for that, the earth pressure would be calculated density times the height. So the height is 4.25 and the density was 22. So accordingly, 93.5 is the value. And on the inside as well, we have got water pressure. So this water pressure is going to be four times 9.81. So four that's 39.24. So uh, as we can see, the earth pressure, sorry, the water pressure which is inside, it is less than the earth pressure that is applied on the outside. What we will do is firstly, we will assign 39.24 as the pressure Sorry, the larger pressure, uh, uh, 93.5 as the pressure load on the foundation. So this will be under the earth pressure set. Here we will assign minus 93.5. So this is going to be, sorry, in positive direction. And we'll click on apply. Then we are going to be assigning an arbitrary load, arbitrary pressure load on the face that we had created. So for that, I'm going to be selecting the face. This face that we have here. And on this face, we will be just subtracting the value. So 54.26 value I will be as applying in the from the downward direction to upward direction so that we will have a total force of 39.24 only on the inside. So this is going to be minus 54.26. And this is going to be under the earth pressure set. So I'll click on OK. All right, so we are done assigning the weight or all the loads to 
all our members and now we will move ahead to assign this boundary condition now we are going to be assigning support soil support to our math foundation and for that we will be defining the soil spring support property we can use uh, our manually calculated kz uh, that is vertical spring constant and horizontal spring constant values or we have got joseph e ball's formula as well to calculate the spring stiffness values for the vertical and horizontal direction. So if I use this information, then there is a soil stress wherein we provide the SBC of the soil. I'm assuming 230 kilonewton per meter square as the SBC. And here we get the result of the vertical and horizontal spring stiffness values. I'll click on OK to finish the definition. And then I'll click on OK to assign it to the selected mat foundation. After that, we can go ahead to the next part that is performing the analysis. So let us run the analysis. First of all, I'll save it. Usually WT. And then the analysis will get performed. One good part about Midas Engine is that uh, it is going to ask you for saving the model file. And after you have saved your model file, it will automatically save the model file again and again without your permission. But don't worry, it's not going to delete your commands. You can still undo the commands after the program automatically saves the model. OK, so uh, our analysis is completed in like a second less than a second and we can see now the results from our results tree menu we can look at the results for the dead loads and for the live loads and earth pressure separately if we generate the load combination we can see the results for the combination result so to check any of the forces or any of the results you just have to double click on that result so this is the displacement in the z direction considering only the sulfate. Let me hide all the labels. All right, so uh, we have seen how the deformed shape can be visible on our screen. You can also look at the uh, displacement in xyz this is for the dead load you can look at the deformation for the live load you can directly change from here this is for the live load and then this is for the displacement because of the earth pressure okay so that's one part now let's move ahead to the next part that is reactions well uh, here we have got the subgrade stresses so we can look over here. So this is our deformed shape. Let me hide the body. Yeah, so this is our deformed shape. I'll undeform it. We are looking at the pressure. So this is a subgrade stress or subgrade stress uh, pressure in the Z direction, which we can see in the legend. We can look at the wall forces as well. So there is actual force that we can look for the wall. Then shear force values, bending moment values also we can see. Now we usually assign separate reinforcements at the edges and at the central part. So accordingly, we need to divide our walls into three parts. Or we can uh, perform the analysis as plate elements and perform the design. So that's one part. Now let's move ahead to the next part that is plate stresses. You can also look at the stresses, normal stress at the top and bottom. So if you look only for the walls, let's just activate only the walls. So we can see over here, this is the normal stress in the X and the Y. There is maximum shear. We have pond mysis stress as well. This is for the dead loads. And same thing, we can look for the earth pressure loading. 
So we can see that there is maximum stress at the bottom and especially at the place where two walls are joining. All right, so this is how we can uh, see the results, analysis results. Now let's move ahead to the design part. First of all, we are going to create load combinations. We can manually create the load combinations or get it automatically generated. But this generation would be for building type of structures. So when it comes to water tanks, we would have, we would uh, need to, basically we need to create our own load combinations. So here we have the dead load and earth pressure. And we have over here dead load earth pressure again. I think I missed something. Our live loads are not applied. Please let me go back and assign the live loads. So we have got slab load, which is to be assigned to our slabs. I'll assign the dead load and live load to the slab of let's say minus 1.5 kilonewton and a live load of minus 2 kilonewton per meter square. And assign it to this particular slab. And then I'll rerun the analysis. And let's move ahead to create the load combinations again. So if any load is not applied in a particular load set, then it will not be utilized by the load combinations. So now you can see there is one load combination with their load and earth pressure, and the other is with the dead load, live load, and the earth pressure. Okay, so that's basically how the load combinations are generated. So you can add over here the envelope as well. So load combination can be selected from here. You can select the load combination which you would like to use. So that is FDB, this one. So it's for creating the envelope. Okay, so this is basically how we can create the loop combinations and modify it as well. We can look at the load combination results from here. For example, the pressure in the Z direction considering uh, the dead loads and the earth pressure. And as if we consider all, then it is FDCLB. BC4, right? So, yeah, this is minus 134.73 as a maximum pressure, subgrade pressure for our water tank mat foundation. Okay, so after this is done, we'll move ahead to creating the groups, design groups. So, here we have automatic generation of design groups. We can also manually assign the design groups. So, let me initialize the structure and click on OK. And after that, we'll move ahead to the uh, design part, wherein we will create a design case that includes all the members. And we'll click on OK and run the design with automatic rebar arrangement. So for automatic rebar arrangement, we can specify over here what should be the minimum and maximum diameter of rebar. For the walls, it has 10 and 13 as the maximum, minimum maximum rebar. But if we need, as we do, we can select more number of diameters of bars for the wall. So I'm selecting in this way, and you can actually choose from here, which should be the minimum and the maximum diameter of rebar. Okay, so that's for the vertical as well as for the horizontal diameters. And you can also control over the spacing of the vertical rebar arrangement. For example, 25 mm, uh, 250, 25 centimeter. For horizontal as well, let's say 300 cent mm. Okay, so you can specify this information and same thing can be done for the mat foundation. So here you can actually provide the diameters again and provide the spacings. 
Likewise, so we have 0.44. So we'll specify this information over here for our math foundation and we'll click on OK. And let's click on OK, see how the analysis, uh, sorry, the design is getting performed. Yes, uh, when we perform the design, we can see over here the notifications or the message, which is, uh, which is actually telling us what the problem is when it comes to the wall design. So for the wall to be designed, it requires the story data. So you can generate the story data by going to the pre-processing mode, structure, story, add okay and auto generate the story data by selecting all the members the program will automatically identify the height of the water tank and height of the stories so after this is done you can go ahead to perform your analysis and design at once there is one more method you can consider this particular wall as the basement wall as well if you are performing the design like a basement wall so if i make this as a basement wall of yeah 400 mm thick now i can move ahead to the design and regenerate the design group because earlier it had the wall type of member now it has got basement wall type of member and now we can go ahead to run all the analysis as well as the design and the rebar auto arrangements but before we do that we need to take care that all our members are included in the analysis and all our members are included in the design so after checking this information then only we can go ahead to run all so I've run, I'm going to run the design now, analysis as well as design, and have automatic rebar arrangement formed. All right, so we are done with the rebar arrangement, automatic rebar arrangement. Let us look at the rebar arrangements. So to see that, we have got a detailed design report that can be generated. We can see at the basement wall design report, the mat foundation design report, and the slab design report. We can get a summary result in the form of Word file. So here we go. We get a Word file report for our slab. And for our mat footing, and finally for the basement wall. So for the basement wall, we can get the crack width check, and we can get a linear creep check and stress check as well, along with the moment and shear checks. That's about the summary. When it comes to a detailed calculation, we get a similar type of a word report generated. And this is not just going to give us the demand capacity ratios, but it is also going to give a detailed calculation information along with the clauses that are referred to for the calculation for each and every member okay so that's about the design report generated in the word file you can also get the report in the form of table so this is basically by going for the slab. This is the output in the form of table for the slab. But the outputs actually are more interesting when it comes to drawings. So let's check out the drawing generated by the program. So you can actually generate the drawings by going for the settings. 
wherein you can auto generate all the information related to our model and modify and click on OK. After that, we'll save our information and then generate the drawings. So here we are going to look at the drawings generated by the software for the water tank, underground water tank. Midas drawing opens up as we click on the drawing generation. It is going to take all the information from Midas engine, the design information from Midas engine, and going to generate the drawings. So here we go, we have our Midas drawing open and now we can click on generate drawing and we can go for a structural design overview wherein all the information related to the project will be showcased. And then we will go ahead for generating some structural plans. So we can go for the foundation plan. That is a matte foundation. So let's place it on the screen and we can see over here the rebar arrangement for the mat foundation if you divide the mat foundation into parts you will get different design results for different parts of the mat foundation so this is for the mat foundation wherein 16 diameter of bar is placed at 200 mm spacing at the bottom and at the top bnt is written in the brackets this is for the mat foundation. You can also look at the wall list and the foundation information. Let's also see the drawing of slab reinforcement, which is at the roof level for our water tank. So this is the rebar arrangement for the slab, wherein 13 mm die is used at 350 mm spacing center to center for the top and for the bottom in both the directions. Let us also look at the rebar arrangement for the basement wall. So we have one for the X direction and one for the Y direction. So longer and shorter edge, shorter wall. Results will be displayed here. We'll click on two points so that both the drawings can be placed on the screen. So this is the output we get 13 at 200 top, 13 at 200 bottom. So this top and bottom is dependent on the local axis of our wall. So basically it is going to be front and back, the top and bottom. We get a key plan of the wall which is being displayed. This is for the shorter wall. We get the height, thickness, and the reinforcement arrangement. And we can also generate the information in the form of a list. So here we have the list for the basement wall and the slab. So this is our slab information, 13 at 350. You can specify any typical type of arrangement from these typical drawings. Whatever you see over here is uh, CAD compatible, as in all the CAD uh, commands are applicable in this MIDAS drawing software solution. This is for the vertical plate that is used for basement wall. And the type B is written over here in the table. Name is also provided and the reinforcement arrangement of the X and Y at the front and back is specified. You can also create a section profile. 
that'll be one section and let me take the section profile from here to here So this is the section of our water tank wherein we can see the slab thickness, we can see the wall thickness and the mat foundation thickness. And finally, we can generate the bill of material. So I'll click on OK for generating the bill of material, which is in the form of Excel sheet. So the Excel sheet is generating the bill of material for our water tank structure. So this is the bill of material generated by the program. Okay. Let's look at the results. So that's for the steel. Okay, so when it comes to RC members, we'll get to see the information for the slab, wherein concrete volume is given in meter cube, rebar is given in ton, and formwork is given in meter square. And we have in the RC basement, the information for our basement walls and our footing. So this is how the uh, bill of material is generated for our water tank structure. Let me get back to the presentation. When it comes to optimization, we can also include a rigid zone, especially when it comes to our, uh, our columns connected to the beams or our columns connected to the mat foundation or the slab. So we can consider those rigid zones and avoid having maximum stresses at the point where the connection is. Then further, we can also use wall column and plate beam type of members if we have got, uh, let's say for example, when we have got slabs at two different levels and those levels, I mean those two slabs are connected by a beam. So in that case, we can create a plate beam on one side, there will be a wall at the top of the plate beam and on the other side, the slab will be somewhere at the, uh, let's say at the bottom of the beam. So you can actually simulate the different levels of slabs at both sides on the both sides of plate beam. That's about plate beam, which will be designed as a beam member. Similarly, we have the function of wall column. So the wall column can be used for having or placing the beams on at any point uh, throughout the length of our wall or column, I would say, and the design will be performed like a column. When it comes to high quality outputs, we have seen how the word file reports are generated to give us a summary report and detailed calculation report is also generated in which we can see all the formulae as per the code and the subclause numbers. That's about the detailed report. Midas Engine also has got a report maker wherein you can generate the reports in this way. A report maker opens and then further, you can actually put all the information, the drawings, the information about the design, the analysis, and you can actually save this information that you would like to assign to the report maker. You can edit the report maker anyhow, so we have a complete control on our report that is getting generated. You can edit even the photos. And if there are any modifications in the model file, you just have to rerun the report maker and a word file report will be generated by the program.
So you can have such templates generated for, let's say, one type of a project and uh, create the model, perform the analysis and design for another project and use it, use the same template for creating the entire project report. So I'm sure it will take very less time to generate the project report when it comes to Midas Engine software solution. Okay, so that's about the report maker. Now, before we move ahead to the support service, I would like to also show you about the overhead water tanks. So similar to how we have created our underground water tanks, we can create our overhead water tanks. I will show the modeling procedure for that. Now, let's take, for example, the steam water tank that we just did is somewhere located at a higher level or is elevated. So in such a case, I can use various modeling methods, other modeling methods. So I'm, I'm choosing the grid line modeling method, wherein I have got an offset of one meter and then I've got some four numbers of spacing at three meters and then again an offset of one meter. Same thing I'll be providing in the Y direction. So I'll just copy the information. Sorry, let me try again. This is our define modify. Yeah, so one comma four at three comma one. Then one comma four at three comma one. And the level, well, I'll have three Okay, let's consider five at five meters and I'll click on apply. All right, now over here I can create my water tank at the top level itself. So what I can do simply is I can go to the member. First of all, I'll start with the bottom part. So bottom part is going to be my flat slab as I'm going to have uh, columns below it and I'll use a thickness over here of 300 mm and I can directly select the okay let me go to the isometric view and I can select the corners of my grid line or instead of this, I can also use convert into member option, wherein I can have the flat slab type. And I just have to select the periphery of my flat slab. So I'm selecting the periphery of my flat slab. So once I do that, I can see a preview and I can click on apply. So this is how I can do it. Further, let's say I would like to have an opening. So I can actually create an opening using the same grid lines. So I can create in this way the opening. So let's say I have got a different flat slab on the outside with let's say a thickness of 150. And then further, I can convert my inside grid lines into flat slab again. So I'll have a thickness over here. Again, I'll do the selection easily using these options. So all I'm doing is selecting the periphery grid line, and then I'll click on apply. So I've got two thicknesses for the same flat slab. One is 150 mm and the other is 300 mm in the, on the inside. Okay, and further I can also convert my grid lines into columns and beams. So this one, we can just look for the beam. Here I'm selecting only the horizontal grid lines, the program is automatically going to select only the horizontal grid lines. You can select the section shape over here and you can also create the columns 
similarly. So here again, I will ask the program to select only my vertical members. These are braces that I selected by mistake. I'll just undo and press space bar to come back to the same command to create my columns. The section property of 500 by 500. Yeah. So I'll select. I'll select from the top view actually. That would be easy. So from the top view, I'm doing a selection in this way. That's it. I'll click on apply. So we have got our beams, our uh, columns as well. And any part that we don't want, we can just select and delete. Okay, so that is it. Then this way, basically, we have created our bottom slab of the water tank. And same thing, we can do it for this part. I'll just go to the left side and I'll select these beams, which I don't want. So these beams would be easily selected by actually using a selection filter. But I'm able to do the selection over here by simply clicking on them directly and pressing delete. So I don't want these beams actually. We can have cantilever beams. This is how we can create cantilever slab. Now further, we can go ahead, create our walls. So to create the walls, we can actually directly go to the plane and we can go to this particular plane right over here and then go to the member and you can define the uh, wall or you can define the basement wall type same that we have or you can also create plate type of members. So uh, plate type of members would be generated if we are in a vertical plane. So that would be more easy. However, I'll make it more easy by adding one more grid line. So we can actually go to the uh, structure and ortho grid generator. And then we can create or modify our grid line. So there is modify option. I select this and I copy it upwards for let's say three meters. So I've got my grid lines extended to another three meter level. And now I can use my grid lines to create my uh, plate elements. So this is how it will look like. So I select easily using my grid lines, the periphery of my plate members, and I'll click on apply. So same thing, we can do it on the other side. I'll better use the convert to convert grid lines to plate members. Okay, and select this part. If I want to unselect some part, I can press shift and unselect it. So again, just like AutoCAD, we have this option. So again, I'm selecting this part. Yeah, and this one is also remaining. Okay, and whichever I don't want, I'm going to press shift and unselect those grid lines so that the walls won't get generated at those locations. Okay, and 
you can select the thickness of 300 mm and click on apply so i've got my walls and further i can go ahead and create my uh, flat slab again on the top i can extend my columns as well on the top so all these basically options are available to create a water tank type of a structure and again the same thing we can do we can go ahead to perform the uh, or apply the self weight or and the pressure loading or pressure loading on the plate type of members so that's uh, earth pressure load that we can create again depending on the local axis of the walls we can assign this earth pressure loading and uh, further we can go ahead and perform the analysis and design of all the members that we have in this uh, elevated water tank structure so i have already created this elevated water tank structure and you can see over here uh, wherein all the columns are extended at the top and we have created the flat slab for our uh, Top of our water tank and also flat slab is used for the bottom of our water tank and further I have um, Performed Okay analysis only I can perform over here Okay, support data is not assigned. Just let me assign the support information over here. So I'm assigning a fixed support condition. And let us look again what we have over here in the model. So support is there. And some static loads are applied, dead and live loads are applied. And now let's go ahead to run the analysis as well as the design. The default uh, analysis and design cases would get generated by the program. They should include. Okay, so analysis is getting performed for the elevated water tank. And then we will look at the results for the supporting structures okay let me select the load combinations and run the design. Okay, so basically uh, we are going to get all the results similar to what we had seen earlier. So um, I would just go ahead, perform the design of this structure and then we can later on see how the design output is generated. It's the same thing that we had seen for the earlier water tank. So let's look at the status. So we have got all our members okay. And we can see the actual ratio. It's pretty less, but the bending ratio is 0.97. And the shear ratio is touching one almost. So this is basically how we can get the output generated. I mean, the design result generated, and then finally the drawings. Okay, so that is it uh, regarding the water tank structures, underground and elevated water tank structures. Now let me tell you about the Midas, Midas support services. So Midas uh, has got several videos available on our website, that is en.midasuser.com, wherein a step-by-step -step procedure will be shown. It's always better to go for a video as we can see how the selection is done and how the entire project is completed in Midas Engine Software Solution. Also, there are some tips and tricks that you can see from the videos. You can also let us know your queries on globalsupport.com wherein we can provide you solutions within 24 to 48 working hours. 
let me conclude the session today. So we have got over here a water tank, underground water tank structure for which we perform the analysis, design, drawings, and also the reports. There are several modeling features in MIDAS engine software, depending on the type of structure and what all information you have for the modeling. So general structures such as elevated water tanks and transmission towers can also be created, analyzed, and designed. That's what we saw today. And apart from that, we saw since the day before yesterday that RC structures and steel structures can also be analyzed and designed in MIDAS engine. Good part that all types of foundation are within the software solution. So you don't need two separate software solution. One will be doing the superstructure and the other will do the foundation. No need for two separate soft softwares or do both the superstructure, substructure and the foundation in one software solution itself. Report generation is in the form of Word file. So that's a pretty sophisticated output that the program can provide. The drawings can also be generated for the beams, columns, shear walls, slabs, mat foundations, basement walls. And we can see rebar detailing as well as we can uh, see the bar bending schedule for especially for the beams and columns. And then we can also generate bill of material in the form of Excel sheet. I'd like to talk about some users of Midas. So these are some of our top global clients and they are using either of our software solutions like bridges, buildings, and geotechnical. These are some of our users in Tanzania. Then we have users in Uganda, in Kenya. So we are in coming in Africa as well, and we are trying to uh, spread our software solution and the knowledge that we can share, of course, uh, from our side by providing extensive trainings and webinar sessions. Okay, so now I would like to take up the question answer session. There are several questions actually, so I hope I'll be able to answer all of them. Okay, one question is about the shear rebars. So uh, for the punching, basically we assign the reinforcement to the program and this reinforcement will be utilized for the punching shear check. The session is recorded, so we will be sending you the recording. Another question is about how to create uh, basement walls or uh, tank walls with different or varying thickness. So that is possible. However, uh, we have to divide the walls into different parts from the top to bottom and then assign separate thicknesses throughout the height. Now the question is about to model the chamfer between slab and wall. Well, uh, we have to provide a different thickness for considering the cham chamfer between the slab and the wall joint. So a separate chamfer type of member is not actually here, but yeah, increasing the thickness would be the solution for it. Now the question is about mesh size for the analysis. Yes, we can modify the mesh size for the analysis. Right now, if you can see, this is the mesh size, 
that was one meter actually and this is basically controlled from the analysis settings from the mesh you can go to the 2d mesh and change the length from here you can make it 0.5 and then you can reduce it or you can even increase the mesh size so this is basically how we can do it i'll show it over here so i'll go to the pre-processing mode analysis settings firstly let me show what is the thickness in the post-processing we can see the meshing mesh edge this is the mesh size and if you go to the analysis settings and go to the mesh you can change it to let's say 0.5 and after we run the analysis we will be able to see smaller mesh size like this so we have complete control we can also control the meshing from here like there is mesh size control Now the question is if we can change the size and spacing of the rebars generated yes we can do the modification of the rebar information so let me show that after the design has been performed so let's say the reinforcement is assigned by the program and we are not okay with this reinforcement arrangement so we can actually go ahead and uh, we can assign our own reinforcement arrangement so I can share with you the information about it Another question is about PEB or pre-engineered buildings. So uh, apart from tapered structures, uh, we can of course perform the uh, analysis and check the design results by assigning the reinforcement before performing the design. Another question is about the slab. Uh, does the slab apply the wood armor method moment uh, for the calculation, reinforcement calculation? Well, yes, uh, we have that option in the design settings to consider the wood armor moments. So in the rebar uh, checking control, we have member force and there is consider wood armor moment. This can be considered before performing the design. So I'd like to show you over here how we can change the reinforcement arrangement. So here we have rebar data. So let's say for the walls, you would like to change the rebar information. So you can right click and say define or modify. Here we have the reinforcement arrangement, which can be modified. And after that, you can re-perform the design. as the design results would get deleted so you go ahead to run the design and then you can just click on ok so whatever the reinforcement is assigned right now to our members will be checked by the program so now if i go for a design report of this wall right over here just a summary 
So we can see that the 16 diameter bar is now assigned by the program and checked accordingly. So this is how we can assign our own reinforcement arrangement. We can change the diameters of bars. You can change the spacing as well. Now the question is, if we have a swimming pool type of a structure, can we create irregular base? So yes, we can create irregular base, no problem. We can create a inclined, or we can have math foundations at different levels. So that is also possible in Midas Engine software solution. Now the question about a question is about masonry water tank. So, uh, sorry, but masonry water tank structures uh, re would require nonlinear analysis. So, nonlinear analysis is not available in MIDAS engine software. So, I believe it is not exactly possible. We can approximate it, but it won't be exact. Wall type of member and basement type of member. So we have both types of members. Uh, again, over here, the wall will be designed as a shear wall and the basement wall will be designed as a basement wall. So there is a difference between those two members in terms of design. But in terms of analysis, both would give us the same analysis results as both are going to be created as plate type of elements. Temperature variation also can be assigned in my dissension. So we have got over here under the loads. Let me go into pre-processing. There is temperature load. So we can assign system temperature load to the structure. So temperature variation can be assigned basically to the walls as well separately. You can select likewise and you can assign the temperature variation. So I'd like to thank you all for spending or sharing some time on understanding MIDAS engine software solution. I hope this helps for your practical projects and thank you very much again.